What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Chinchilla, here for another live episode of Cooking with Chinchilla. Now, I was thinking the other day, or this week, same thing, right? Um, that we've been doing this show together for six months, and I couldn't be more proud of everybody that messages me and their recipes that they've used from my show, from our show, actually, um, because this show wouldn't be anything without you guys. And I appreciate all the love that we've been getting. Um, you know, I did mention that I was gonna be using chicken for tonight's pozole, which is a green pozole. Who do we have? We have Irene, hello Irene, hello Heather, John, Mel, thank you all for watching. We're gonna let a few more people jump on. Tonight's show is gonna be really special because as you can see, and don't be mean, don't say I look like a scarecrow, but I am trying to get more fallish in the wardrobe. My mom, if you don't know Rosalinda, she will be posting about 100,000 comments below. And uh, I love my mom to death. This is where I learned how to cook and this is why we started Cooking with Chinchilla. I started it on her page, Home Cooking Recipes, but I do wanna give a shout out to Food Recipes page, which I will be personally inviting. It's a private group uh, by one of my friends up in the Northeast. He's a new friend and I will be personally not only inviting you to home, home cooking recipes, which my mom Rosalinda made, um, but also to his page, which is Food Recipes page. You can find not only recipes like this, but a ton of other recipes that are simple, they're cheap, and they're homemade by simple people like you and I. So I wanna thank you all for tuning in every week and appreciate it. And tonight, we're gonna be doing green pozole. I did talk to my friend Sharon and her husband Kelly who were amazing friends out in Colorado. I made friends with them out there um, by bartending for them and working for them. You couldn't ask for any better employees. I was very blessed to work with them and so I, I FaceTimed them last night and she said that she wanted the recipe for my green pozole. So I gave her the recipe and I told her I was gonna be using chicken and she mentioned she was gonna slow roast the pork that she bought, the pork, uh, pork roast. So I se me antojo, like if you don't know what that means in Spanish, I craved it. So I went and bought a pork shoulder, which I have literally, if you can see in the background, this is gonna be the star of the show. I know a lot of you, you can, you can absolutely use beef, you can absolutely use chicken. It's up to you and your preference, but I personally like pork and slow roasting it. You have like your house, like smelling very fallish, very, Oh, like, you know, when you go to your mom's house and like you wake up and you're visiting during the holidays and like you can smell like the lengua cooking overnight or like the slow cooker cooking. I woke up to that this morning. Hopefully my roommates enjoyed it as well. But that's going to be the star of the show. But we're going to start cooking with chinchilla by introducing the simple recipes. Let's get this uh, apron on because, you know, I don't want to get a little dirty. So let this let's get this on and then I'll introduce you to to the co-stars of the show, but then we're gonna do what I have been roasting for almost 24 hours, and I'm gonna teach you guys on this episode how to make that. So, let's tie this up a little bit. I think I know how to tie a knot, hold on. All right, there we go. Simple, simple recipe, guys. Like, if you, let me show you something real quick. Where is it? It's hiding. Oh, here it is. Okay, we'll hide that bow for a little bit. So. Let's say you go to a Mexican restaurant, right? It's Sunday morning, estás crudo, estás cruda, or you just want a really good sopa. You're gonna get a bowl of pozole, let's say about this big, for about 10 to $15, depending on where you live. This entire meal is going to teach you how to make at least five to 10 bowls of pozole, depending on how much you eat, for under $20. So guys, not only is home cooking fun, if you like to cook, or if you wanna pick up some new hobbies, that's fine. But it's really cheap, it's really simple, and you're gonna get a lot more than your buck. So, here we go with the ingredients. Simple, simple ingredients. So, as you can see, I have two pots going here. You probably can't see the other pot, but here it is. Here's the main pot, is where we're gonna make the sopa, we're gonna make the pozole. But we have the white onion, we have the fresh garlic, we have tomatillos, and I only have two here because I've already had uh, about nine to 10 already kind of boiling for about an hour, because um, you want to bring out the flavor, and I don't want to keep you guys here for an hour just for the boiling tomatoes. And you're also going to want your serrano peppers. You can also use jalapeno peppers, but serrano peppers are good as well. 
The only reason why I have the oil here is if you want your tortillas kind of oily. Otherwise, you can just do it dry like I do it, um, but that's just an option, or you can make tortilla chips like I taught you guys last week. Super simple, cut it into four pieces, uh, heat up the oil, put in the tortilla chips, drain them out on a napkin, and you got fresh tortilla chips. So we're gonna put the oil aside right now. No, this is not what you think. I see you. This is actually dry oregano. Um, so I'm gonna be using two types of oregano. Now Iris, how are there two types of oregano? All right, so this is a dried oregano that you're gonna buy in a packet. And then you're also gonna have your fresh oregano that I bought from the grocery store as you can see here. And the way you're gonna like keep your fresh herbs alive and fresh is what you want to do is you want to cut the ends off of the tips and you want to add it into some water and add it into like a cute little glass like this because it's like cute when people come over or like when you're cooking even for you so that's what we're going to be using uh, we're going to be using both um, we're also going to be using my favorite the pink himalayan salt pepper we're going to put this aside because we got to introduce the star of the show which is coming up uh, we have the tortillas, obviously, what we discussed, because you gotta have tortillas or tortilla chips. Depends on you, um, but I'm gonna be doing soft tortillas. I like my sopas with soft tortillas. Sometimes I'll top it with like the crispy, you know, strips of chicken or the corn tortillas, but today I wanna do soft. It's really getting fallish, so I wanna do that. Um, who else? Paula, hello. Angie, hello. Andrea, how are you? Melissa, what's up? I'm so glad you're safe. Um, everyone that I saw in your pictures, I, I don't know what the occasion was, um, but I hope and pray that y'all are well and safe from the hurricane in Mexico. My friend Melissa, actually, we, uh, we played college soccer together. We've been friends ever since. All right, the rest of our ingredients, um, I have the Mexican hominy here. And as you can see, it's, a, like, it's like a big puppy, okay? So it was either between a small can like this for $2 or buying the big tub of love that we have here for about 250 so I bought this and with the rest of the hominy that we're not going to be using I'm just going to put into Ziploc bags if you go to my YouTube at Cookie Witch and Chilla you'll see the space saver video that I did this week the chato bean video that I did this week and we have more to come this week I got two more um, including this little puppy right here um, so we're going to put this aside and you can go to my YouTube again to see how you can save some space so kind of stutter over my words sometimes so excuse me all right and what we have here is going to be the verdura and what the verdura is is when you make pozole a lot of traditional what traditions the tradition to do is to add cabbage lime jalapeno onion cilantro radishes but it really depends on your taste as you guys know if you've been watching cooking with chinchilla I really don't like raw onions, so I try to cook it all, um, but if I am serving others, I am respectful, and I do cut it up for them. Makes me cry a little bit sometimes, but I'm sure it does for you too. But here's a little mix that I made that my mom actually taught me, which is really smart, and it saves kind of like space and like bowls and whatnot, but it also gives it a good flavor. So what I added here, is cabbage and it's sliced cabbage that I got in a bag it was like a dollar fifty and then I got like a little five ounce uh, can of like the carrots and the pickled uh, jalapeno so I added that and I actually marinated it overnight as you can see here so it makes a lot more and it's gonna make your money go a lot further but now I'm excited now that we've gone over the ingredients we're gonna introduce the star of the show, which I'm so excited. It's literally been cooking for like almost 24 hours. And if you want tender, soft, buttery meat or chicken or roast, pork roast, whether it be pork roast or beef roast, you gotta do it this way. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. So give me a second. You don't want this to go bad and bring it to room temperature. Even though it's pickled, you wanna serve it cold with the sopa. So let me put this in the fridge real quick.
and I'm back. All right. So now the star of the show, let's move this aside because we got to get like the grand entrance. I wish I had like a little cute like red carpet for this, but we don't. It's okay. So let me grab my little pot holders. Bring this over. And I'm going to let you all know how I made this. So this has been roasting since about 10 o'clock last night. So almost 24 hours, give or take. Um, but I did buy a pork shoulder. It only cost me $8.50. And you don't even, depending on the size of your family, how much your appetite is or how much, you know, y'all eat, this right here for $8.50 is a lot. So what I did is I put in the pork roast. It's shoulder or the, yeah, it's a pork shoulder. It has a bone in and it also has all this delicious like fat and meaty parts of it and you want to keep all that i'm telling you tex-mex food is not the healthiest but it's hearty it's good and your money goes a long way now if you want to take the pork shoulder and trim off the fat that's fine you can it like i said every time we do cooking with chinchilla it's your cooking and dependent on how you want to do it i'm going to keep the fat and mix it in because it's going to give it more flavor and we're also going to use the juice that you see here and the melted fat that integrated into the meat to give it the flavor. So what I did, I didn't add any salt. I got about a five pound pork shoulder with the bone and it cost me again $8.50. As you can see here, what I added was some fresh sage. I want to say I used about one two i probably used about this much okay as you can see the picture on my facebook you can see i had it on top that was more just for presentation but then i let it heat up on high and the slow cooker and i had that on for about an hour and then once i saw the blood coming out of the bone and kind of boiling and the pork which i did fat bottom on the bottom so it could fry a little bit so give it kind of a char flavor kind of a a, a fry flavor um, then I added the sage as you can see here this is a fresh sage and now this is a cooked sage if you see how that broke apart that's how the meat I oh my god I can't wait until we pull the bone out because this is the fresh sage but this has really integrated into the meat and give it the flavor that we want for the green pozole so what we're gonna try next I'm so excited and that's all I added plus three cups of water. So I did about five pounds of shoulder, pork shoulder roast. I did, um, I kept all the meat on it, all the fat on it. And I did about that much of sage that we had no salt, no seasoning, nothing, just natural flavors that are gonna integrate into the meat. And I added three cloves of fresh garlic. Now that we have introduced the star of the show, again, this is the pork shoulder. I'm hoping, as tender as it looks, I've been poking at it all day, and maybe taste testing. Don't tell my mom, because she hates when I do that, okay? So, who else is watching? Hey, cousin Rachel, how are you? Kala, how are you? Uh, mom, I know, I know, I know. I was actually gonna use chicken, um, and but I talked to my friend last night from Colorado, and Sam Antojo, like I really craved the pork, and I wanted it to really slow cook. And then you got the bone here and oh, I had to do pork. I know you don't like pork and my mom, you know, she loves chicken and, and, and some kind of meats, but more preferably, she's a healthy eater. Uh, she, you know, she exercises a lot. And, uh, but sometimes I like to kind of binge and do pork and red meat. So we're gonna try and see if the bone comes out pretty easily. So I might embarrass myself, I might not, but we're gonna check it out. Oh, it's like <laughs> it worked ah, I'm so excited I'm so excited see this is what happens when you slow cook your roast it could be beef roast or pork but look at oh my goodness see I am so excited that worked because I was like oh my god I think I'm gonna embarrass myself if it doesn't work but okay so now that that like smoothly came off the meat we're gonna try to take all the meat off the bone oh that's a ligament so we're not going to use that all right that's a lot of fat and bone 
which I'm gonna set aside too. We don't want too much fat in there. But look how, that's, this is what happens when you slow cook your food. That's a lot of ligament. We can use this meat. And the way you're gonna get a lot of flavor into your roast or slow cooking your food is the bone, okay? This has a lot of flavor, has blood in it, and I know that sounds disgusting, but it's gonna give this roast so much flavor. So we're gonna set this aside, and I'm so excited it came out like that. Okay, it cooled down a little bit. That's actually, so let me show you all how buttery this meat is gonna be. All right. So I'm literally sticking, look at that. Oh, that's a big slab of fat that we're gonna throw away. Or you could actually fry it and make chicharrones with it. So I might actually put that aside, huh? Hold on. Super unhealthy, but that's okay. If you're gonna indulge at least once a week with cooking with chinchilla, you have to like indulge. So that's the big slab me get it here that I had on the bottom of the slow cooker so it would integrate all the fat into the flavor and the juices that we put with the pork roast that we had here let's get the rest of it here so if you ever want chicharrones this is what you want we'll put that aside for later let's try to get some of the meat and show you guys how tender this is it's like butter. Oh, this is how you want your meat. You want it buttery. You want it so tender that it literally melts in your mouth. And I'm sorry, mom. I know you hate that I do this, but I have to taste test it. And as a cook, that's the fun part about it. You're at a restaurant. You're going to overpay for this and you don't get to go to the back and like get free samples, but in your own kitchen, you can. And cooking with chinchilla will teach you that every show. Hmm. Guys, not only can you taste the tenderness of, it's like literally melting in my mouth. I use fresh oregano, not the dry oregano. The dry oregano is good. It's gonna give it semi the same taste and flavor, but it's not going to give it the fresh flavor that you can taste in the meat. You don't have to poke holes in the meat. You don't have to do anything. Just keep the bone in it. And as you saw, it just literally slipped off the meat. It was so good. I gotta have another bite, guys. Oh, mm. finger licking. Oh my God, so good. So, because I roasted this slowly, and all I used was water, the pork shoulder, five pounds, for $8, guys. Look at this, it's just literally like falling apart. I don't even have to like put any work into shredding this. This was a whore, not a whore, oh my God. This was a whole pork shoulder. And look how easily that's shredding. Let me show you guys. Look at that. I have only moved the fork just a few times and that's how much it has shredded for me it's really kind of doing the work for itself because it really is so subtle and cute oh my god i feel bone in here so let's take that out there's another bone but look i didn't even have to do anything and all the meat came off so tender so good mm. all right I'll quit taste testing because I'm not gonna even enjoy my bolo pozole if I keep enjoying the star of the show. So we're gonna bring the star of the show over here. So good. Oh, if we had smell a vision oh, so amazing. All right, so what I have, I have two pots over here that I've been slow cooking for about an hour. I put about 10 tomatillos, and these are really small tomatillos, so let's get a spoon to show you guys. Bring this closer so y'all can see. And so about the palm of my hand, probably even smaller, 
I did about nine to 10 tomatillos boiling in some water. I wanna say about four cups of water. As you can see the size of the bowl that we're gonna be using. Usually if you're gonna do something for a party, you would use a bigger pot about this big. I don't have one, but this is enough for my neighbors and my roommates. I did about a whole white onion. So this all has integrated into the water that we have been boiling. I brought it to a boil and then I put it on low covered for about an hour. So that's gonna integrate all the veggies that we're using in here. I did about two garlic cloves in a separate pan. I did the serrano peppers. The reason why I did this was because I'm going to take half of the white onion that I used, some of the tomatillos, some fresh tomatillos, fresh serrano, fresh garlic, and fresh onion. The reason why you wanna do that is you're gonna integrate two flavors into your sopa. You're gonna do the boiled vegetables and then you're gonna do the fresh. And just again, with the sage that we're using, we're gonna be using two oregano's. Uh, you're gonna use the fresh and the, the, the dried one. All right, so that's our next step. Um, the pork is like asking me to taste it again. I'm not gonna do it. Swear I'm not gonna do it. I can't swear, I take that back. Not it. Okay, so we're gonna grab our blender cup. And now that this is cooled down, I did take it off on low from the simmer to let it cool down. The reason why, and trust me when I tell you this, if you're gonna boil hot water or any kind of veggies or any kind of drink into your blender, as it's hot, it's gonna explode and that is not a fun or good experience. So you wanna let your things cool down before you blend it because anything that's hot, that's enclosed, that creates movement is going to explode on you and you don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the same spoon that I had, it's right here, and I'm gonna grab the whole tomatillos I'm gonna grab half of the white onion. There we go. Let's grab some more tomatillos, but you wanna keep at least half of the tomatillos in there. The reason being is I wanna smash those and keep the chunkiness of the, the vegetables into the soup. So when you're kind of, it's not just soupy, you still have the chunks of the veggies and the flavor when you bite into it. And uh, so we're gonna get the two serrano peppers that I boiled separately. We're gonna add those in there and we're gonna add some of the fresh veggies that want to integrate into the flavors of this so we're gonna get this we're gonna get the knife oh I love it and we are using the Linda cutting board that my mom got me Rosalinda don't forget I'm gonna be inviting you personally it is a private page where Cooking with Chinchilla started with my mom, Rosalinda. Um, but it is private, so if you do get a personal invite, I we are so thankful that you join. Um, I didn't mean to do that while saying it, but join it. I will find you. No, I'm kidding. All right. So we're going to take the tail off, the tail off. We're going to cut it in half, a uh, little less than half, and then do about a quarter that in here we're gonna take the thick skin off right then we're gonna add it into the rest of the fresh veggies and we're almost done so did I add a fresh serrano no I haven't so I have two cooked boiled serranos but I'm gonna add one more just to add the spiciness to it there we go and the freshness and we're gonna do about two cloves of fresh garlic this one already has three cloves of cooked garlic we're gonna do one fresh just to like enhance the flavor of the freshness for the pozole. Let's peel this off. And again, if your kids are helping, probably not the best for them to be doing this job. 36 years old and I've cut myself so many times. So this would probably be your job. They could probably be maybe mixing dough for cookies or making lemonade or stirring the pot for the fresh ingredients that we have over here, or even shredding the star of the show. I gotta introduce the star of the show again. Look how cute it looks. And it sh literally shreds itself. 
I'm just proud that the bone came out so easily. I'm so excited. All right, so let's peel the skin off. There we go. And this is just gonna give it a fresher flavor. So add it into the mix here. We have some of the fresh ingredients and we have some of the boiled ingredients that are in integrate into a mix of flavors for the green pozole that we're making today. Tonight, this evening, wherever you are. All right, then I have two tomatillos. Now this is a good tomatillo. As you can see, it's a smaller one and that's fine. We're gonna add it in here. One thing my mom taught me is I did get a bad tomatillo and not to waste your money, but look, this is a little rotten and that's okay. Don't throw the whole thing away. Cooking as a cook here in Los Angeles, California, I've learned not to waste food, especially in the restaurant industry, is you want to save as much product and produce as you can. So all we're going to do is for the infected parts is you're just going to cut it out. And as long as you cut it out and see that the rest of the tomatillo is good, you're good to go. So what we're going to do, we're going to add that in there. We're going to take the bad parts and throw it away. So hold, please. I need some water. I'm going to throw this away. And it's like a 15 second commercial. I don't know, like sing or I'll be right back. I'm back all right so it doesn't look like it fits well I think once it let's see if we can cut this Tomatillo. It's a little slippery because of the juice there we go that fits a little better and now we're gonna blend this let it cool down think that's like pushing the limit but that's okay when you're cooking you learn as you go guys this is probably the second or third time I make green pozole and I've never made red pozole which I almost made tonight but I, I wanted to make it a little fresher like my mom said actually thanks for reminding me no one reminded me but I just reminded myself let's do another fresh leaf or stem or part of the plant of fresh oregano. Let's add it in here so we can add it into the mix. There we go. We're not gonna add salt until we have this blended into the actual like chunkiness of what we've already boiled. Because you still want the chunkiness as you're eating the soup with the meat. So we're gonna blend this up. It's cooled down quite a bit. Let's move the slow cooker over. And what we just did is integrate all, not only the boiled and slow cooked ingredients and the veggies, the fresh veggies that we're using for the green pozole, but also integrated the freshness of the fresh onion and the garlic and the oregano and the tomatillos and the serrano peppers. So we're gonna open this up. Let that cool down a little bit. Oh. Smells so good. Guys, you gotta make this. It's under 20 bucks and you get like five to 12 servings. Again, dependent on how much you eat, but that's fine. It's so cheap, it's super simple, it's super easy to make. And so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna take the Serrano juice of the two peppers that I cooked and we're gonna add it in. So we have that heat that we want from the serrano peppers not only from the freshness but the boiled but also the water that we boiled it into and we're going to take our special tool to smash the tomato or the tomatillos the green tomatoes 
and the fresh onion that had been boiling for about an hour low on simmer so i brought it to a boil and then put it a low on simmer so i'm just going to try to chunk these up and they're easy to kind of smash up because they're boiled and they're super soggy but you still want the chunks of that when you're eating your pozole there we go Gotta add some muscle into it. I was working on a food truck here and I was like learning how to make fresh corn tortillas. And I was like, man, I was like, this is like a lot of work. Like you have to like really indulge into like the masa and like mix it. And like, you know, you have to add the muscle into the, and then it like really, it, I was enlightened guys. I was really enlightened because you know when that chancla hits you or that belt hits you as a little Latino kid or Latina, like, no wonder where, no wonder the Latina moms get the muscle. It's from them making tortillas and like having to add the muscle while they're cooking. So it was kind of an enlighten, enlightening moment. All right, there we go. There we go. So if y'all did see the wholeness of it, now it's kind of this way. So we're gonna add the star of the show, the pork roast. We're gonna put it on high so we can bring it back to a boil. We're gonna add the mix of fresh ingredients and boiled ingredients that we did blend. I wanna say this is about eight ounces. So you can see the color changing now. Look at that, oh. Then let's bring the star of the show, the pork roast. Ah! We're gonna do the same thing with this. Again, because it would, excuse me. Technical difficulties. Again, because it was slow roasted for so long, almost 24 hours, I put it on a high in the crock pot. Um, and then once I saw it kind of sizzling, when you hear the tss, then you add about three cups of water, about five pounds of pork roast, pork shoulder, which is what I used. Look how easy that is. Oh my gosh, so good. So there you go, look how easy it's shredded. This is for the meat of the green pozole. Again, you can use chicken, you can use a beef roast. I chose to use a pork roast. I like pork, I like beef, I like chicken, pero si me antojo. Like I was really craving after talking with Miss Sharon last night from Colorado Springs, um, so I did use pork. All right, so now that's shredded. We're gonna slowly, oh, look at that. Oh, again, it's like butter, so good. Roy, hello, Rosie, Rosie Reyna, Paola, hello, I've seen you before. The only change is boiling the chicken stock. Oh, okay, 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 Sharon, I see that. I'm not using chicken stock this time because it already has enough flavor. So the only thing I'm gonna use to enhance the flavor is the dry oregano, black pepper to give it a little kind of a little kick it's not gonna give it that much spice just don't add too much and then your salt and don't forget like I always say in every show of cooking with chinchilla don't add too much salt you can always add too little but you can you can always add too much <sighs> okay just don't add too much salt okay all right so we're gonna add a little bit pepper a little bit of pepper we're gonna add a little bit of salt and you can have the little uh, shakers at your table when you're feeding your guests or your family, your partners, your roommates, whoever you're with, whoever you're cooking for, even if it's for yourself, um, just have the little salt and pepper shakers. But to enhance the flavors, just ask, add a little bit as you go. We're gonna add the dried oregano. And as you can see, let's show you guys here. Your dry oregano is gonna come out like this, all right? If you buy it in the packets or the bottle at your local grocery store, 
But what I like to do, as you see, it's a little hole here. I like to crumble it up, especially for sopas. Unless I'm topping my menudo or pozole, then I like it whole, but I like to kind of, this looks funny, but it is oregano, all right. But kind of crumble it up that way and then add it into the soup. Add it about a tablespoon. You can add more and taste test as you go. I'm gonna add just a little more, which is fine. I can smell it already, it smells so good. And I can see some chunks of the onion and tomatillo, which looks amazing, because I can't wait to bite into that with the pork roast that I used. Ooh. It smells like fall's coming. Like, I know it's still hot, unless you're up in the north, but it's still a little hot, getting a little warm into the 70s, going up to 90s, like the bipolar weather. But this is a great introduction for cooking with chinchilla into the fall. We're gonna be doing a lot of things like tamales. I think next week I'm gonna be making pupusas. Um, a lot of comfort food, especially now during the holidays. We have Halloween coming. I'm gonna be carving my first pumpkin with you guys. We're gonna do, be, be doing a competition on the best carved pumpkin. Obviously, I'm gonna get first place, but we'll have another second first place in exchange of my first place because it's cooking with chichilla. Come on, guys. It'll be my first time carving a pumpkin, though. It'll be fun. So let's start adding this into here. Look at that. Oh, so good. I feel like I should have taken some of, and I am going to do that because if I'm thinking about it, I gotta do it. So let's get one of these measuring cups and take some of the juice out just in case because it's not a big enough pot, so. I'm gonna put some of the juice out because I really wanna integrate a lot of the juice of the pork shoulder that we've slow roasted. There we go. And kind of go from there. Look at that. Oh my God. I gotta show you. I've got to show, I got to show it off again. Look at this slow roasted pork on how easily it's shredded. Cooking it almost 24 hours. You see the smoke, you can smell the sage, the flavors of the fattiness and the pork. I'm gonna add that in there. There we go. And it literally shredded itself. Ooh, love it. More bone, that's fine. Suffice. We're gonna get some of the juice of this with the fattiness and the fresh oregano that it was slow cooked in. We're gonna add it into the soup. We're gonna add some more of the fresh veggie mix and the boiled veggie mix to the top. Well, not to the top because you wanna leave some room for the hominy because we still have to add the hominy. The fominy, I almost said fominy. Did y'all see that? Did y'all hear it? Are we live? Bloop. All right, so let's move this aside. Let's move this back over here. And I feel like with the leftovers of the pork roast that I made, I had this childhood, uh, I guess what we call in church, a sister or hermana. Um, she used to make these barbacoa burritos with the fresh tortillas, the flour tortillas mixed with mayonnaise. So I think for the rest of the pork roast, I think I'm gonna make that. So if you are all watching from Central Park or if you know me from Garland, Texas, you know Hermana Chata. So I think I'm gonna save the rest of that and make breakfast burritos for me and my roommates for the rest of the week. So don't worry about having to add it all in here. You can always have alternatives. I'm telling you, cooking at home is cheap. Home cooking recipes, 
Don't forget, I'm gonna be asking and inviting you personally to my mom's page, also food recipes page to my new friend. So if you do get an invite from me, please join and uh, get ready for some really good recipes and some really good food that you can make at home for your family. So let's open this up. It's like the big, the huge tub that I got. So it was either this one or like the smaller can, but I got this bigger one because it's like a lot more for like 50 cents more. So let's see. Can anyone cue the Jeopardy music? You know, the do, 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 do. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stick to cooking, not singing. All right, so let's open this big grand thing of hominy, and we are almost ready to serve this green pork pozole that I'm super excited about. All right, so I'm gonna completely cut off the edges, and I don't want the hominy juice in there to take away from the actual fresh flavors that we have here. So I'm going to cut it all the way off the edges and then drain the juice. So that's what we're gonna do now. Well, some of the hominy escape, it's okay. They will live their own lives. Be careful also, if you have your kids helping, do not let them do this part of it. This is really sharp and can cut you or your family. So be very careful with that. We're just gonna do a few cups. Um, let's do, just to fill it up. Hominy. Aye. Fill it up to the top. We are almost done. I am super hungry. Haven't eaten all day, so. Oh, oh, I wish you could smell it. it. Smells so good. Again, guys, cooking with Jatilla is all about simple cooking, cheap cooking. This salt by this big tub that you would probably pay for over $100 for you and your family is only gonna cost you not only with the garnishes, the tortillas, all the ingredients, and the smell of the flavor. Like, I wish they had like green pozole, like candles. Like, that would be amazing. But you don't even need candles if you can cook it at home. And this is what cooking chinchilla is all about. Don't forget to follow my YouTube, my Instagram. I'm here on Facebook. I'm here every week, either it be Sunday or Monday, depends on my job. Um, but I'm here to teach you simple recipes that you can make and with the fall season coming as you can tell I'm a little dressed for fall today um, We're gonna be making more sopas and we're gonna be making more comfort foods that you would love um, For the fall. I might add a little pumpkin spice I know I'm gonna be carving my first pumpkin in the last Monday of October It'll literally be my first pumpkin. We're gonna be doing a contest don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube, my Instagram, my Facebook, and join me every week live. So let's mix this up a little bit. We're almost ready to serve. Let's get a little sartén. Sartén in English is like a little pan. We're gonna be heating up my tortillas. Cover this up. It's coming to a boil, which is what we want. And since everything has really already low simmered and we added the fresh ingredients, which we blended together here on Cooking with Chinchilla, and we added the hominy, the hominy's already gonna be cooked. I don't know how hominy comes raw, but I always buy it cooked. Um, so all we wanna do is just now integrate all the ingredients that have been slow cooked for about 24 hours or an hour as you saw here and integrated the fresh ingredients. And then we are going to put it into a bowl we're gonna still be using the Rosalinda cutting board and cutting up some fresh cilantro along with the cabbage verdura mix that we made and we're ready to eat. Now, tomorrow for Tuesday, you have something to cook for your family. So let's open this up. Oh, so, I'm so excited. Where are you guys watching from? We have Catherine, Nicole, hello, how are you? 
Teresa, no, you're fine. You can always rewatch it. Go and subscribe to my YouTube, Teresa. Uh, you can watch the whole episode. I do have other short minute to two minute videos that I'm integrating into my YouTube. And they are like really simple recipes again for cooking with chinchillas. So don't forget to subscribe and join me every week for a live show. So I'm gonna get about two tortillas. There we go. Put it onto the pan, let that warm up a little bit. This is coming to a boil. It is on high. I'm gonna put it on a medium high. I'm gonna grab some water, guys. Give me about 15 seconds. I talk a lot, as you can tell, for an hour, so I need to hydrate. Who else is watching? Uh, Frank Akri, hello. Carmen Coop, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm here every Monday live. I'm gonna grab some water, so hold, please. Commercial break. Sing or twiddle your fingers, do something. And I'm back. All right, so now that this has come to a boil, it's about ready to serve. Let's get the verdura that we cut earlier. I'm ready to serve and I'm ready to start making some more cooking videos. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube, Cooking with Chinchilla, Instagram, Cooking with Chinchilla, Facebook, and here on my personal page, Irish Chinchilla. Also, Homestyle home cooking recipes, which is my mom, Rosalina's page, and food recipes page, I'm gonna be sending personal invites. So if you are invited, please join. Don't forget, that's my friend, my new friend, food recipes page, and home cooking recipes is my mom's page, which is where Cooking with Chinchilla started. So let me grab my bowl, let me grab my verdura, and I'm ready to eat. Got the verdura here that we made earlier. I am gonna be making like a 30 second commercial tonight on how to make this. But it's pretty much pickled jalapeno and carrots with cabbage. Super simple, great for tacos, great for sopas, which we're gonna be using tonight. So excited. All right, let's get our tacos, our tortillas. And that's okay if they get a little burned. I like burnt tortillas. I don't know about y'all, but not like hella burnt, but like burnt a little bit, like crispy, like, and then add into the sopa and then it soaks the juice up. Oof, so good. All right, let's get the bowl ready to serve here. You gotta clean it a little bit. I want a dirty bowl. I used it earlier for the veggies, so let's clean that up. And again, guys, don't forget, every Sunday or Monday, I will announce it on my Facebook when I do go live. Sometimes I do run a little late, but that's okay. I do appreciate all of you all tuning in. I am so thankful. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube, my Instagram, Cooking with Chinchilla. Here I will be every week. So, look at that. I gotta show you. All the flavors integrated together. Ah! There we go. Look at that. That's how I like my tortilla for sopas. A little tostada, a little crispy, but once you dip it into that sopa, it's so good. Now if you want it soft or if you want it crispy, up to you, but that's preferably how I like it. We're gonna let that sit for a little bit. Now we have the green pozole. That's a little hot. So let's grab these and show you the sopa. We have the pozole there. 
the green pozole that we made, not only with the slow roasted pork for almost 24 hours, we have fresh ingredients, we have boiled ingredients, and with all those flavors integrated together, guys, you're gonna get one of the grass, the grass, the best green pozoles that you've ever had here with Cooking with Chinchilla. So now let's serve it up and see how it comes out. I'm actually gonna do a taste test tonight because I've asked a lot of people when they message me, they're like, why don't you do like taste testing when you cook your food? And you know, I'll do it during the show, but I never do it at the end, but we're gonna do a taste test at the end today. The soup scooper. There we go. Clean that off for good presentation. Y'all know I love presentation. Look at that. Oh my goodness. There we go. Woo! I forgot to cut up some limes. Let me cut up like a couple limes real quick. There we go. Give it a little squeeze. Then we'll just chop it up real quick and we are almost done, y'all. And it might be a little too late for you. Don't forget for tomorrow night, you can go and buy this for your family and cook it for Wednesday or this weekend. It's such a comfort food. And for under 20 bucks, you're gonna have about five to 12 servings depending on how much y'all eat, how much y'all like to eat. This, careful with your fingers, move that aside, and we're ready to serve. Oh, Ooh. look at that. Oh my goodness, look at that. The chunks of the pork and the hominy and the chunks of the fresh veggies integrated with the blended veggies with the hominy and the juice looks amazing. So let's add a little more sopa. There we go. Look at that. Let's grab this. Presentation is key. Let's clean the edges of that. There we go. Let's add a cute little thing of fresh sage. If you're trying to impress people, let's move that to the side. Let's grab the verdura. My hands are clean, I promise. There we go. We got the carrots, the vinegar carrots and the jalapenos with the cabbage, and I did marinate that for 24 hours. Washing my hands just to be safe. We're gonna add the fresh sage here. Oregano. I don't know why I keep saying sage. It's oregano. You have the recipe here on the video. And the dried oregano. Again, this is not California oregano. This is oregano oregano. All right. So we're going to crumble that up and bring that around. So not only do you have your fresh oregano cooked into it and blended with your dry oregano, but you're going to put it on top to top it off. Then I have my crispy tortillas that I have. This is personally how I like them. I like them a little where you can hear the crackle. You got your lime. And there we go, guys. This is your green pozole with Cooking with Chinchilla. Thank you again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube my Instagram, and join me every week for another live episode of fresh, cheap, simple cooking with Chinchilla. I'm your girl, Chinchilla. This is your green pozole. I love you all. I'll see you next week.